Let's face it, the AI we have today is, well, it's staggering. It can write poetry, it can pass the bar exam, it can hold a conversation that feels absolutely real. But when you peel back all that incredible performance, there's a huge nagging question that gets right to the heart of what it even means to be intelligent. So when you're chatting with an AI and it gives you a perfect, insightful answer, are you really talking to a mind or are you just talking to an incredibly advanced parrot, something that's just mimicking understanding without having any of its own? That's the core question we're digging into today. All right, so to get our heads around this, we've got to start with the original benchmark for machine intelligence. You've probably heard of it, the Turing test. Back in 1950, the genius Alan Turing came up with a pretty simple but powerful idea. Imagine you're in a chat room talking to two other, let's call them beings. One's a person, one's a computer. If you chat away and you can't tell which one is the machine, well, then the machine passes the test. For a long, long time, this was the standard. If it acts smart, if it talks smart, then for all intents and purposes, it is smart. But that idea was about to get a serious challenge. And that challenge comes in the form of a famous thought experiment, one designed to blow up the whole idea that passing the Turing test is the same as genuine understanding. It's called the Chinese room. Okay, I want you to really put yourself here. Imagine you're locked in a room, all by yourself. And here's the catch. You don't speak or read a single word of Chinese. Now, people outside start sliding slips of paper under the door. They're covered in Chinese characters. To you, they're just meaningless squiggles and shapes. But you're not helpless. Inside the room with you is a massive, incredibly detailed rule book, all in English. This book tells you exactly what to do. It says, if you see this squiggle, find the piece of paper with that squiggle and slide it back out. You follow the rules perfectly, and to the people on the outside, your answers are flawless, insightful, even witty. They are absolutely convinced there's a fluent Chinese speaker in that room. You've just passed the Turing test with flying colors. So here's the million dollar question. Do you understand Chinese? The answer is, of course not. Not a single word. You're just a symbol shuffling machine. You're matching shapes based on a rule book. There is zero comprehension, zero understanding of what you're saying. From the outside, you look intelligent, but on the inside, there's nothing there. Now, the guy who came up with this brilliant argument was the philosopher John Searle back in 1980, and he had a very specific target in mind. It was a position called strong AI. That's the really bold idea that a computer with the right program isn't just faking a mind, it actually has a mind. Searle designed the Chinese room to show why that idea, he thought, was just plain wrong. What Searle's experiment does so perfectly is highlight the massive difference between two very important concepts, syntax and semantics. Let's break that down. Syntax is just the rules. It's the grammar, the structure. It's following the rule book to know which symbols go where. Inside that room, you are a master of Chinese syntax. Semantics, on the other hand, that's the meaning. It's knowing that the symbols for, say, dog, refer to a loyal, four-legged friend. The person in the room has perfect syntax, but absolutely zero semantics. They have the rules, but none of the meaning. And again, this whole thing is a direct attack on strong AI. This claim that the right computer program can wake up, have thoughts, feel things, and be a conscious mind, just like you or me. Searle's conclusion, then, is simple and powerful. A computer is always the person in the room. You can make the rulebook bigger, faster, more complex, but it'll never change the fundamental fact that it's just manipulating symbols. Syntax, no matter how sophisticated, can never magically turn into semantics. A computer can't get meaning from just shuffling squiggles. Now, as you can probably guess, an argument this big didn't land without a fight. Oh no, this kicked off a massive, decades-long debate, and some really clever counterarguments started to pop up. So, the first big comeback is called the system's reply. Proponents of this idea say, okay, Cyril, we'll give you this. The man in the room doesn't understand Chinese. You're right. But they argue the man is just one part of a bigger machine, kind of like the processor in a computer. The understanding isn't located in just the man. It's in the entire system. The man, the room, the rule book, the papers, the whole shebang working together is what understands Chinese. All right, next up is the robot reply. This one tries to tackle the meaning problem head on. It says, okay, what if we take the whole Chinese room and we put it inside a robot? Give it cameras for eyes and arms for hands. Now, when the system processes the symbols for pick up the glass, it can actually see a glass and grab it. 
The idea here is that by connecting the symbols to real-world actions and objects, you finally ground them in reality. You finally give them meaning. Then you get the brain simulator reply. This one argues that a simple rule book isn't a fair comparison. What if the program wasn't just a book, but a perfect simulation of every single neuron firing in the brain of a native Chinese speaker? But Searle had a fantastic response. He said, fine, let's imagine the man isn't following a rulebook anymore. Instead, he's in a room full of water pipes and valves that perfectly mirrors the brain's synapses. He gets an input, follows instructions to open this valve and close that one, and a perfect answer flows out the other end. Searle then asks, does the man understand Chinese now? No. Do the water pipes understand Chinese? Come on. His point stands. A simulation, even a perfect one, isn't the real thing. So you might be wondering, okay, that's a neat 40-year-old philosophy puzzle. Why does it matter now? Well, it matters because today we are all the people on the outside of the Chinese room, talking to these huge, large language models every single day. And here is the absolute kicker. This is the modern plot twist. If you go ask a powerful AI like ChatGPT if the Chinese room argument applies to it, it basically agrees with Searle. It'll tell you that it works by finding patterns in massive amounts of data and predicting the next most likely word. It's just following an incredibly complex rulebook. It will flat out admit that it lacks genuine comprehension. By its own admission, it is the person in the room. And that leaves us right here with this enormous unanswered question. If a machine can act in a way that is completely indistinguishable from real intelligence, if it can write a beautiful song or help a scientist make a discovery or just be a good friend, but inside it's all just symbol shuffling, does that difference actually matter? What is this understanding thing anyway? And how would we ever really know for sure if another being, human or machine, truly has it? Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more fascinating videos from Plato's Footnote. Please provide your thoughts and feedback in the comments. Have a great day.